Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you, and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. The date is Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018. And I would appreciate that you turn off your cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you, Chairperson Granado. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, I want to invite a group from the Webb Elementary School to come on up front and head us, head all of us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, before we go on any further, I'm going to make a motion that we change an agenda item on <clears throat> this evening's agenda under action item 6A, which was to, um, I can find it, I do have it here, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve revised policy number 5600, which was student discipline, and we're changing it to the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a revised policy number 5,700 student discipline. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this at all? It was just a, a miss. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that motion passes. Okay, Mr. Emmett, we have quite a few recognitions this evening. We have we'll a lot started. going on. Right? A lot going on tonight. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have multiple uh, staff student recognition uh, activities this evening. If I could uh, first have our friends from the web pre-K, please come up. Hi everybody, I'm Heather Baresi. I'm one of the preschool teachers at the Webb um, Elementary Preschool. Um, I have Cindy Springer here, she is one of our speech pathologists. I have Tracy Belinda, she's one of the other preschool teachers, and Katie Bankston, she's another preschool teacher. And I have some wonderful friends that came to support us tonight. I have Bree, I can't tell by their helmets, Penny, <laughs> Evan, Lily and Nico, and we're all here to kind of tell you a little bit about our preschool trikathon that we host every year. I want to give you a little bit of a background of what St. Jude's is. St. Jude's is a resource hospital that is advancing cures for childhood diseases, and tr they do it through research and through treatment. And you wonder why support this research hospital as opposed to doing other hospitals that are within our area. And it's because St. Jude's really 
wants you to only focus on your child during the, a very traumatic event during their illness. And they never, ever give families a bill for food, treatment, travel, or housing. Treatment costs for cancer can last up to three years and cost on average of $425,000. And one day of chemo can cost about $1,500, one day of oxygen, $150, an, an x-ray can cost about $322. And I gave a treatment sheet if you want to see additional costs um, that families may go through. The other fascinating thing is in 1962, the childhood cancer survival rate was only 20%, and today it's 80%. So their research and treatment that they're doing at this hospital is amazing. It costs about $1 billion to actually operate this hospital, and 75% of their operating costs come from generous donations. And this allows the St. Jude's to focus on what matters most, and that is saving lives regardless of anybody's financial situations. So the Weathersfield Preschool Program supports this hospital, and every spring we host a trikathon. And this event really teaches kids about bike safety, while at the same time, the importance of helping out others. Both the three and the four-year-old classrooms um, celebrate in this event, and families are invited to cheer us on. And I'm gonna tell you what takes place um, in this event. We start off by giving every family a donation sponsor form, and the kids take that home and they begin raising money. And then they learn about bike safety, and the kids are gonna tell you what they learn. And we learn this through, Let me, I'm just gonna switch this over. Brianna, tell everybody who that is. Bike crew. Bike well bear, that's bike well bear. And he teaches us lessons for, Penny, tell us what's important. Wear your helmet. Wear your helmet. <laughs> and what else, Evan? Don't go in the street. Don't go in the street. Watch out for cars. Watch out for cars. And Nico? Uh, uh, look where you're going. Look where you're going. It's so important. That was great. So I'm going to give you a little snapshot of what the trikathon looks like. We have it outside of the um, outside the Web Kindergarten Center, Web Kindergarten Center, the Web Elementary School. <laughs> Sorry, you can tell I started at the Kindergarten Center. Okay, I'm really old here. <laughs> we start off by ha inviting the kindergarten classes. Mrs. Ercolani and Mr. Mia's kindergarten classes come. They make posters. They cheer us on. And I really need to say, this year they were a great cheering squad. Then we have volunteers from Mr. DeMonte and Ms. Wynn's um, sixth grade classes, and they really help keep the flow going in a circle so that we have all the riders going in the same direction. And those little guys who are having trouble and just learning how to pedal, they're really there to ha help push the kids along. And here is a video that I will show you. Maybe. It's having trouble, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so the teachers start off by riding this really big tricycle around, and the kids follow us. And we ride around this circle continuously while people cheer us on, and we have this motto about kids helping kids. And the kids scream that and yell at us as we are biking. <laughs> There's a little slight incline on that circle, so that's always a little hard. Actually, he's in the middle of the circle. He can't see yet. I don't know. So anyway, we can... He's going! He's working hard. And of course, that incline has a nice little hill coming around that bend. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. 
And then these are just some pictures of the kids really having a great time and coming together for such a great cause. And they're anywhere from riding tricycles to toddler toys, and they all have great, fabulous hel helmets as demonstrated tonight. And it's really just a fabulous event. And last year I received a letter, and I gave you guys a copy of that letter, um, with that telling us that in the, since 2010 when I started hosting this event, we raised about $13,000, and you can see all the different years broken up of how much we've raised. Um, and this is the we Weathersfield community that has raised this money. This year we raised $1,180, which gave us a new grand total of $14,899.60. And I, I need to say that St. Jude's is so generous and they call us after each event just letting us know how thankful they are for all the support that we've given them over the years. And it doesn't need to stop at preschool. There are definitely other ways um, all grades can can participate and, and raise and fundraise. They can do K through five. It teaches you how to be a hero and, and healthy habits. Or you can take the, a different approach and go the academic route. And then for high school, they encourage students to develop leadership skills while raising support during spirit weeks. So there's other events that schools can participate in. And we just wanna say thank you for all your support and letting us tell you all about our St. Jude Trikathon. So thank you. In addition to that, we have some paraprofessionals in the room today that I want to thank as well, because this event obviously is a full hands on deck. And I'd like to thank um, Melissa Cook, our supervisor, who also is there to support us. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. The preschoolers are handing out stickers. Well, web, web, web Pre-K, thank you very much. You know, kids helping kids, what a great lesson. Thank, thank you. you very much. <coughs> nice job. How are you? We, uh, in keeping with the web theme, we have our next group uh, from web coming up to talk with us about PBIS. Come on up, students. <laughs> Good evening, Board of Education members and community. On behalf of the Webb School, uh, I would like to welcome you to our PBIS presentation. At Webb, we believe deeply in educating the whole child. Although we are taking SBAC right now, there is a lot more to education than just standardized tests. We have eight students and a wonderful representation from our PBIS team here tonight to share a little information with you. Thank you for having us here this evening. Um, I'd like to introduce three members of our PBIS committee that are here this evening. Mr. Verderam, our building principal, Mrs. Ziegler, our music teacher, and myself, Melissa Perry, school social worker. Um, we also were very lucky to have our student representatives that are here tonight. We have Isabella Weingartner, Cooper Farrelly, Ariana Werub, Addison Davis, Bree Davis, Ethan Werub, Caitlin Farrelly, and Jake Weingartner. Thank you for having us here tonight. We all know the importance of learning academics like reading and math, and at Webb, we also believe that teaching our students how positive behavior can impact themselves, the people around them, and their community are essential life skills. In fact, Webb School has adopted the PBIS philosophy for years. We call it the Webb way to be. And our students take great pride in showing the expected behaviors at our school. Early this fall, each grade made a short video clip modeling the different expected behaviors at Webb. Here is a sample of the adorable video our teachers use during their morning meeting time to review the PBIS expectations at Webb. This is the expected way we walk in the halls. 
to line up for, for recess. to teach you the rules of the bus line here at Webb. Do not change your bus line. Don't put your feet out in the middle of the hallway. Walk to your bus line quietly. Don't stand in the middle of the hallway while students are trying to get to their bus. Make sure to keep your hands somewhere where they won't get stepped on. When the bell rings, go directly from your classroom to your bus line. Keep your hands to yourself. After you are in your bus line, walk to your bus. All around Webb, there are posters and signs to remind us about expected behaviors. We can earn Web ATB cards for being responsible, respectful, respectful, productive, and safe. We work together to get Web ATB cards for our class. At lunch, each grade level can earn the golden spatula for being respectful and responsible in the cafeteria. This year, each classroom took part in a door decorating contest. The students worked together to create the door decorations in hopes to spread positive messages around web. Oh. Decorating our doors was so much fun. When we finished, each class took a tour around the school to see everyone's hard work. 
We can earn we can earn the golden paintbrush when we show expected behavior in art class. If our class earns it, we can hang it on our door for a month. Web has a book of the month club. Each class reads the chosen book for the month. The book the book helps us remember to stay positive and show the web way to be. So every morning and at special school events, Web recites our school pledge together as a community. This pledge supports our PBIS philosophy. Please enjoy this short clip of our school pledge from our recent Walk to School Day. for having us here tonight to share many of the ways that Webb is using PBIS school-wide to help create a positive environment for students and staff. Thank you very much and on behalf of the board I love your positive message so thank you. At this time, Mrs. Granado, if we could have members of the Weathersfield Police Department come forward with uh, Judy Keene for a brief presentation. Can we have that go up? Yeah, he's coming. Put it up now. Officer Bob. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, Eric. Officer How are you? <coughs> Uh, good evening, board. My name is Mark Trahan, and I am on the board of the Keene Foundation, and we're here tonight to talk about D.A.R.E. Um, the Keene Foundation, as you know, is actively involved in the community here, and a big part of our mission is to work with kids. And the, one, of the, uh, one of the nicest decisions you get to make is when there's a no-brainer type of affiliation that you can have between the Keene Foundation and the organization of D.A.R.E. here in the town of Wethersfield. Anytime you have an opportunity for the police community to reach out to the kids, um, that's a win in itself, regardless of what they're talking about. Anytime that the officers can, can talk to kids, it's brilliant. This is even more important, uh, and we hear the word opio uh, opioid used uh, significantly now. It's not, um, it's not just a cancer um, someplace else. It can be a cancer right here in our community, and anything we can do to educate our kids to stay away from drugs with the new curriculum at DARE um, uh, and their dedication to the program, the Keene Foundation um, has elected to uh, donate uh, $5,000 to the DARE program to help forward their mission uh, here in town. And tonight, I'm here with um, Bob Batosky, who is a board director and also a officer here in town, and also Officer Bob, uh, Mike, Mike Batosky, excuse me, and Mike Arduini, and our fearless leader, uh, uh, Judy Keene. Um, so on behalf of the Keene Foundation, we'd like to present the town of Wethersfield um, a check for $5,000 for the D.A.R.E. program. Yeah. Um, as I said, Judy's our fearless leader. She always tells me what to say. Um, the, the portions of the, uh, we work uh, with the carnival here in town. I think a lot of you attend the carnival and a big chunk of our proceeds um, from that event. Um, or usually go to a notable service or, uh, or event or organization here in town. And this year, one of them was the D.A.R.E. program. So continue to go to the carnival because this is what you get at the end. Thank you. What a great combination, the Keene Foundation and DARE. Thank you again, Judy Keene, our 
Very godmother. <laughs> yes, I, I, Mrs. Granado, actually have to reiterate that. You know, you have two fantastic <coughs> partners right there with the Keene Foundation and all they've done with regard to the after school programming. You'll hear more about that at an upcoming board mem uh, meeting. And certainly the partnership we have with the Weathersfield Police Department from Officer Bob and the um, DARE program to our SROs um, to them being on call whenever we need them. Uh, two very important partners, so greatly appreciated. At this point in time, I'm going to step over to the podium. Uh, it's time to recognize our retirees. This is one of those bittersweet moments where you say thank you for the service and you lament that you're losing some great uh, employees. So without further ado. I could please have Lori McDermott come up to the podium. <laughs> Mrs. McDermott spent 35 years in Weathersfield as a special education resource teacher. Lori first worked at Highcrest uh, Elementary School in the Alternative Day Program, then at Silas Dean Middle School for 21 years. She spent the last six years back at Highcrest School where she began her Weathersfield teaching career. She was the 2008 SDMS Teacher of the Year, and while at SDMS, she was a team leader, a student council advisor, and involved in the Cash for Camp fundraisers and the South Park Shelter in Hartford as a community service project. Over the years, Lori actively participated in many building and district-based committees. She prides herself in working with special education and regular ed students via co-teaching, <clears throat> flexible groups, small groups, or one-to-one -one instruction to ensure student success. At Highcrest, she was an active member of the PBIS committee and supported her students to become better collaborators, something she modeled throughout her own relationships with her grade level colleagues and parents. Lori, we wish you well in retirement and enjoy your travels with your husband. Congratulations, Lori. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Congratulations. Can I please have Ann Peck come forward? <laughs> Ann Peck is a dedicated paraprofessional who has worked in the Weathersfield Public Schools since September of 2000. She earned an associate's degree in early childhood education from Westbrook College in Maine and chose to pursue a paraprofessional position to utilize her skills. Ann Peck is the epitome of wonderful. Weathersfield has been fortunate to enjoy her enthusiasm and dedication. Anne started her career in the kindergarten center, Heather mentioned a little <laughs> earlier tonight, and shortly thereafter moved on to the preschool. A lifelong learner, Anne received training in discrete trial intervention and provided individualized support for a student within his home setting. Anne spent time working at Hanmer and Charles Wright schools, and the rumor has it she even rode her bike to work. True. <laughs> Before eventually returning to the Webb Preschool program. While at Webb, Ann worked in all grade levels, instilling kindness, tolerance, and patience in the numerous students who were lucky to know her. Since she came to SDMS two years ago, she has really put the spirit in our SDMS spirit days. Her costumes and enthusiastic approach to her day puts a smile on anyone's face who passes her. Sharing Ann's positive qualities is easy from an administrative point of view, but her praises are truly best sung from those who are closest to her, parents, students, and her colleagues. A parent close to Ann shared, Ann Peck has been a special part of our lives for 10 years. We first met her when our daughter was in the four-year-old preschool program at Webb, and she began to work with her directly the next year in kindergarten. Ann has been supporting my daughter in her school day every year since then with humor, caring, and great organization. We truly don't know what we'll do without her, but we wish her all the very best as she pursues new dreams in the next phase of her life. Additionally, a student with whom she works with this year said, Mrs. Peck is a very special person. What I will remember most about her is her ability to pick the best outfit for every school spirit day. <laughs> How much she loves to be organized and her love for Disney. 
I will miss seeing her as the first person to start my school day, and all my friends will too. And a colleague shared, Anne is an outstanding paraprofessional who demonstrates sound judgment, strong organizational skills, and a positive influence over students every day. She engages with gusto in our spirit days, and her enthusiasm is infectious. Currently working at the middle school, Anne worked longer than she had originally planned because she just loves being with the kids. She shared that she feels blessed to have had this position and she always felt like an important member of the team and supported by the teachers throughout the years. And we wish you the best in your future and thank you for all of your years of service to the Wethersfield Public Schools. Thank you. Congratulations, Anne. If I could please have Debbie Wolford come forward. <laughs> Debbie Wolford began at Highcrest in 1999 teaching fifth grade. She vividly remembers being nervous with only having two years of experience when the class number climbed to 26 children with 17 being boys. <laughs> we don't have that now, do we? <laughs> but they turned out to be one of her favorite classes. Deb continued in fifth grade when she moved to Webb after its renovation to an elementary school. Five years ago, Deb moved down to grade three and has enjoyed the last few years helping students move up to be a big kid. Over the years, she has worked on a variety of committees and especially enjoyed working to implement the Go Math program a few years ago. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. And Deb says that working with all of the people at Webb to build a strong community to support the children has been special and rewarding. Although she will miss her colleagues, she is looking forward to spending time with her family in New York and is hoping to finish some quilting projects, do lots of gardening and reading, and take daily walks with her dog. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulate Debbie Wolford. Congratulations, Debbie. If I could please have Marie Trzinski come forward. <laughs> It is an honor to recognize Mrs. Marie Trzinski, Charles Wright's reading consultant. Mrs. Trzinski graduated from Hunter College of the City of New York with a BA in English and Elementary Education. Immediately, Mrs. Trzinski began her teaching career as a first grade teacher for the Lakeland Schools of Lake Mohegan in New York. After moving to Connecticut, Mrs. Trzinski went on to teach elementary school in Plainville and Durham. Mrs. Trzinski earned her master's in elementary education in 1991 and is awarded a fellowship for her sixth year in reading and language arts in 1998, both from Central Connecticut State University. Wethersfield Public Schools welcomed Mrs. Trzinski to the ranks in 1997 as a reading consultant, a position she has held for 21 years at Charles Wright School. Mrs. Trzinski is known for her expertise with reading recovery and presentations at the state level. She has served on the board of the Connecticut Reading Association for over 15 years and currently serves on the board of Central Connecticut University's Writing Institute. Weathersfield has been fortunate to have Mrs. Trzinski's expertise for the last 21 years, bringing her total, but who's counting here, to 36.4 years of service and education. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Trzinski. Congratulations.
Congratulations, Marie. If I could please have Donna Lewis Hookie please come forward. It is an honor to recognize Mrs. Donna Lewis Hookie, one of Charles Wright's general and instrumental music teachers. Just months away from a career of 38 years as a general and instrumental music teacher, Mrs. Hookie has inspired hundreds to perform at their best. An instrumentalist at heart, Mrs. Hookie holds a bachelor's degree in music education from UConn, a master's of arts degree in music teaching from Connecticut College, and a sixth year from UConn in educational leadership. Mrs. Hookie has taught both in South Carolina and in Connecticut for Ledyard, Groton, and Wethersfield. While in Groton, the Connecticut State Board of Education recognized her as Groton's 2001 Teacher of the Year. Not only an outstanding music teacher, Mrs. Hookie has also been published throughout the Connecticut Music Educators Association and through GIA Publications, a composition workbook for instrumentalists entitled Jump Right In. Recommendations abound in Ms. Hookie's file, and Weathersfield has been fortunate to have such an accomplished and noted professional within the ranks. She will leave with the legacy of going above and beyond in all that she does with our students. Thank you, Mrs. Hookie. Congratulations, Donna. If I could please have Mr. Ted Griswold come up to the podium. Mr. Griswold began his teaching journey after graduating from Oberlin College. With his music education degree in hand, his first teaching job was in Yarmouth, Maine. He taught many things that first year, including junior and senior high school band, chorus, guitar, and elementary instrumental music. After the year in Maine, he decided to attend graduate school at the University of Tennessee. He was ready to pursue a master's degree in trumpet performance. While in graduate school as part of his teaching internship, he taught undergraduate music ed to students whose primary instrument was trumpet. In Tennessee, he met his wife, now together for more than 30 years. He brought, back north, he, he brought her back north, and Ted began working for the Wethersfield Public Schools. When he started in Wethersfield, he taught elementary instrumental music and was the assistant high school band director. From 1991 to 1994, he taught half day at Emerson Williams and spent the other half of the day as the high school band director. Mr. Griswold designed and implemented an honors program for his high school band students, and in 1994, he returned to elementary teaching full time as an instrumental music teacher. In 2013, he added teaching strings to his repertoire, and he added more responsibility in 2017 when he began teaching kindergarten music at Charles Wright, <laughs> and you survived. <laughs> Mr. Griswold has developed curriculum, progress reports, and assessments for the district. He also gives back to new music educators through his work as a team mentor and a cooperating teacher through the BEST program. In addition, he's a trained Connecticut Music Education Association uh, adjudicator and has adjudicated at regional and all state auditions for about 20 years. Ted works beyond the school year and for 12 years he was part of Wethersfield Summer School Program and for the three years he was also part of Newington Summer Music Experience. Mr. Griswold's passion for music is evident in everything he does. His Griswold Instrument webpage is a testament to his love of children and his excitement to bring instrumental music to our students which is so so important. Mr. Griswold's inspiration not only comes from music, but from his family and faith. We thank him for the inspiration that he continually provides to our children and for all who know him. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted Griswold.
Congratulations, Ted. If I could please have Mr. Ray Perron come to the podium. Ray, Ray has been employed by the district for the past 23 years. He has been the go-to fill-in person for the night lead man whenever the lead man was out. Ray not only did his post well, but he took the initiative to learn the entire building as well as his own post. His ability to help the younger staff by sharing his building knowledge was very helpful. And I can attest to the fact of all of those evenings at Weathersfield High School, Ray was always willing to stop and have a chat. And I will miss that deeply. Ray, I thank you for your time well spent in our district. Congratulations and good luck. Congratulations, Ray. If I could please have Al Williams come forward. Al might not look familiar to you, but um, Al worked tirelessly at Weathersfield High School. Al worked on the third shift most of his 20-year career. He was the behind the scenes guy who would spring into action after everybody was gone for the evening cleanup, buffing floors, making the building presentable for the next school day. Al is a quiet man who never said no to any job he was presented with. Al will be missed by his coworkers and staff alike. Al, we wish you all the best and please enjoy your newfound time. Congratulations. Congratulations, Al. If I could please have Mr. Jeff McPhee come up to the podium. <laughs> Take your time. Jeff McPhee started with the district in 2001 at the Webb School as a part-time employee. He caught on quickly as to what custodial duties were all about and within just a few short months was promoted to a full-time position at Highcrest School. Jeff continued to perform well and was moved to the Silas T. Middle School as the night lead man in 2013. Before announcing his retirement, Jeff had moved to the high school night lead position to help out the younger staff who'd recently been hired. Jeff, we wish you good luck in your future endeavors and thank you for your service to the Weathersfield Public Schools. Congratulations, Jeff. If I could please have Fred Bushy come up to the podium. Fred Bushy has served, as the district, served the district as the Director of Maintenance and Operations for the past 11 years after a lengthy, successful career in the Hartford Public Schools. Over that time, Fred has helped see us through 
hurricanes, blizzards, H1N1 <laughs> flu, swine flu, bees, bugs, mice, gas odors, leaks, AC breakdowns, too little heat, too much heat, Sinatrol fa false alarms, and the list goes on and on. Fred's knowledge and understanding of the infrastructure was of great assistance to the district over the years, and Fred was instrumental in helping to guide the Wethersfield High School renovation from design through completion. Fred has also been a driving force behind many of the security and safety upgrades that the district has implemented over the course of the past five years. Please join me in recognizing Fred Bushy and thanking him for his many years of due diligence. <laughs> Congratulations, Fred. I uh, have several staff members who were unable to join us this evening, but I certainly want to recognize uh, five individuals uh, very important to the Wethersfield Public Schools who um, have retired or will be retiring at the conclusion of the school year. Uh, from the Stillman Building, Ms. Carol Cancellari. From the Stillman Building, Ms. Joanne Formica. From Wethersfield High School, Pat Allen. From Wethersfield High School, science teacher Sue Chifo. And from Highcrest, paraprofessional Mary Cabalbo. Please join me in congratulating these fine <laughs> students. I'm taking this moment to give out an award, but he's not retiring, and it's for Justin and the early retirement. Justin, I'm so sad to say goodbye, and also incredibly excited that you're moving on to your whole new world. I've watched you mature in this position as the Board of Education student representative. You've shown mature social skills and have always been prepared for your comments on life at the high school. You have taken this position seriously, and you work well with the adults and students that you represent. I give you a heartfelt good luck and thank you from myself and from the board. Thank you, Justin. And I just want to read this. It's from the Wethersfield Board of, Ed, Board of Ed to Justin, our student representative to the Wethersfield Board of Education 2017-2018 for exemplary service, dedication, and commitment. Thank you again. You're wonderful. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue on. <laughs> All right, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting we had on May 8th, 2018. So Did anybody see any corrections first? <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> okay, we have a motion, a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Those meetings are approved. So now, is there anyone? Anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address, and may I remind you that you have a five-minute limit. Courage for 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Emmett, you have communications to share? Yes, a few this evening. Mrs. Granado, thank you. Good evening again, everyone. Uh, I just want to bring everybody up to speed uh, with regard to the progress with our elementary um, plan for potential redistricting and reconstruction. We have a kickoff meeting with the representatives from Colliers and Malone McBroom this Thursday to begin the phase one of the facility enrollment study. This is certainly an exciting opportunity to begin planning for the future of our district. As you know, from a financial standpoint, we've had uh, conversations with town leadership and we'll be utilizing the 1% reserve uh, funding that we have in place to support the um, kickoff of this event. The idea here is uh, a lot of data collection at this point in time and the development of multiple options for future use of our schools um, and the potential enrollment uh, opportunities and residency opportunities in terms of um, uh, the process of guidelines for street addresses and um, w where students will go to school. This is a process that's going to take some time, but certainly we understand that um, we want to do this um, diligently, we want to do this thoughtfully, and we want to come up with multiple opportunities. So um, parents be looking in the future for additional meetings um, as we get the data in from these uh, particular groups. Uh, the news of yet another school shooting last week continues what has become a disturbingly familiar trend. Uh, last Friday, following the news, I asked our security director, Hal Even, just to check in with principals on any safety and security concerns. Uh, as you know, we're always looking for opportunities uh, to enhance our security measures. Um, as the budget situation this year has become clearer and eased, we were able to address a couple of areas of concern through our operations and maintenance budget. The first was the placement of a lock cylinder at the community entrance to allow first responders easier access. That is completed. And the second, which is currently being addressed, is the revamp of the main entrance at Silas Dean to create a man trap. We found that area to be extraordinarily weak with the ability of people being able to train in when the door was open. So we're currently working on a redesign and reconstruction in that area. For those of you who are attending the Memorial Day um, event on Friday, you'll be able to see that um, in action. Um, the other upcoming safety related uh, CIP tasks slated for this summer is the additional window filming at Emerson and at Charles Wright. So we continue to be diligent about trying to create the most safe and secure environment we can for our students and our staff. Um, congratulations to the Charles Wright community on the resurrection of the May Fair, which was held this past Saturday at the uh, school. Many thanks to the parents and school staff who revived the Charles Wright tradition. In spite of the weather, the event was very well attended, and I can also report that the line to dunk the superintendent in the dunk tank was excessively long. <laughs> and a heartfelt thank you to the custodial staff for filling the tank with warm water. <laughs> with regard to shared services, we're winding our way through this process now. The current priority is to complete the hiring process for the custodial maintenance supervisor position, which is a town position. At the present time, we have jointly interviewed candidates and the town's HR department is following up on reference checks. And the other aspect that needs to be defined was the role of town versus Board of Ed in terms of contract negotiations. It was the opinion of our council that the MOU places the responsibility for contract negotiations on the town. So at this point in town time, the town labor attorney will be uh, assuming negotiations. I can assure you that we will continue to have a seat at the table. Um, many more questions coming forward with this, and it is certainly going to be a growing process, but one that I think we can certainly <coughs> handle. So with that, that's communications. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Michael? Elaine? Uh, Mike, that first meeting on the um, potential redistricting, mm -hmm. you have a date for that, sir? It's this Thursday. And will we get minutes, like in our Friday update, of what goes on in those? It's it's not a formal committee, okay. so it's not a committee of the. I didn't um, understand that. No, that's. Okay. I, thank you for asking that. No, it's not a facilities and maintenance committee okay. meeting. No, thank this you. is just a kickoff. I wasn't sure. Any other questions, John? Can we call the Silas Dean entrance change something other than the man trap? It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> How, about How about a bear a, trap? A, a, a lot of bears around. A security enhancement uh, device. How's that? That's better. Okay. okay. Very, very good. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. So we'll move on. So tonight under action items, and we have quite a few of those too, um, can I have, Chris, would yeah. you read action oh, six. item 6A for us, which was the one that we played around with there? Right. Okay. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve revised policy 5700 concerning student discipline. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Just uh, per the document before you, this is um, something that's been coming out of the Policy and Planning Committee, a lot of um, di you know, dis really good discussion, I think, about uh, the kind of policies that, that we want to uh, have everyone buy into uh, and get input on. So the policy had its first reading May 8th, Board of Education meeting, and the Administration of the Policy and Planning Committee has recommended its approval. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, yep, John? I just want to, um, the administration and the schools are on board with this particular policy as well. They've been given copies of it and everybody's okay with what we have. Yes, John, the, the uh, change in this is legislative. Um, so the committee has done nothing beyond what was legally required. So okay. yeah, these policies are online currently. And as these policies either get uh, eliminated or added or adjusted, we adjust those um, to our website. Yes. I, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew it wasn't done because of an action. It was legislatively Cor caused. Absolutely correct, sir. Okay. Absolutely, Absolutely correct. correct. Thank you. I think that's the point that we have to make sure we tell people. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on it? OK. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions, so motion 6A passes. Motion 6B, <coughs> Elaine, would you read that for us, please? Um, the Policy and Planning Committee moved that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the deletion of policy 9530 and official duties of the board treasurer. <laughs> um, we don't have a treasurer on our board. We have a vice chair slash secretary. And so without that position, we don't need this policy. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? I think Elaine explained it. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Motion 6C, Ginger? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a budget transfer for fiscal year 2018 <coughs> according to the details provided by Mr. Kazaka to Mr. Emmett. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Any discussion? We all read it. Can somebody please re remind me of what this um, threshold would be, Matt? What's the threshold? We did. I might have missed it just with all going on. 25? What was the threshold? The threshold is 25,000. Okay, yeah. thank you. I want to be sure I'm reading the right one numbers. Thank okay, you. thank you, Matt. Any other questions for Matt while he's here? Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion 6C passes. Motion 6D, Kevin? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the revised operating budget for the 2018-2019 school year in the amount of $58,728,469. Okay, a second? Second. All um, right. Discussion, go ahead, Kev. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry to jump on you, but uh, <laughs> this reflects the further reduction that um, the board worked with the town council on. Of We further reduced it by $299,000, $299,194. This includes reductions regarding um, uh, one special ed student moving out of district with the uh, savings of $115,000. Uh, an $89,000 savings uh, regarding to Mr. Bushy's position moved, moving over to the town, um, sales of some buses for $30,000, um, substitute reduction uh, line item reduced by $25,000 to reflect uh, our current trends um, and s some other items. Okay, so we have a second on that? Do we have a second? No, I have a question. Any, a any discussion? Okay. Go ahead. I, I have to compliment. Um, our superintendent for working on this and making these reductions without having to reduce personnel. It's so important to this board that class sizes stay small. Mm -hmm. uh, and he worked very hard to keep everybody in place and I thank him for that. Thank you. John? Yeah, I also wanna echo that. Um, I was concerned about the high school losing 
a guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's so crucial that those individuals stay in spot with all the different social issues that are going on in our schools. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Polly? Uh, yes, I just wanted to echo that, but I also wanted to expand. Um, I think that uh, we also should recognize the, um, the incredible amount of work that um, our uh, business office has done, especially Mr. Uh, Kazaka, and also the principals and staff in the schools because um, I think that uh, sometimes what we lose sight of is the fact that in order to make the cuts that we do, uh, something's got to give and everyone has to um, uh, pitch in. And I think we've, we've seen some wonderful cooperation from our staff and I know I certainly appreciate it. So mm -hmm. thank you. Any other comments? Well, I've said to both Michael and Matt that I thought this past year to get through that budget was a Herculean effort and it was a very successful one. We had the state cut us twice, which was um, so alarming um, that this was going to um, damage our beloved school system. But we got through that and then um, a budget cut which goes along with the way the budget is done. And I have to say, along with other board members, that we wanted class sizes. We also wanted security, as we were all becoming more and more aware of. Um, and it really was a Herculean feat that we kept this budget together. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we have a vote on it? Did we second? Yeah, I did ask. We had a Four. second. Four. Ellen said yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so motion 6D passes. And John, motion 6E. <laughs> 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 Look at him. This is a good one. <laughs> Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education rescind the action taken on April 24, 2018 regarding the non-renewal notices of the following 54 non-tenure teacher, teachers. ID numbers 905908, 906183, 906032, 905863, 906154, 906104, 906094, 906093, 906015, 906 905-906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 906-105, 
So one of the things uh, uh, dear and close to my heart and along with other administrators and teachers in this district is our professional obligation to grow the profession together. Um, one of the things we wanted to share tonight is one of our partnerships with uh, Central. I'm happy to have Sally Drew, associate professor here tonight and um, students that are currently placed at the high school as part of the master's and teaching program at Central. Um, throughout the district, we have um, internships of um, administrators, teachers, uh, field study students, um, student teachers, all sorts of uh, different practitioners practicing within the field, within the learning lab of Wethersfield Public Schools to grow their craft. Um, we have a great professional obligation to help grow the future of educators um, around the state and the nation. It's important uh, to retract and re uh, to recruit and retain um, high quality educators. Um, nationally, we have areas around the country that have an educator shortage and have a hard time getting highly qualified um, teachers inside the classroom. So I wanted to uh, highlight a little bit about the partnership and one of the things you're gonna hear um, from uh, Sally, was that Sally? <laughs> Um, there's not very many Sally's around, um, is a little bit about this partnership work and um, some where we have some of our central uh, students now. Um, and uh, I wanna just kind of highlight that idea of partnership, that this is really a two-way partnership. Well, uh, we're able to provide a learning lab and opportunities for st uh, their students to be in our classrooms. We also have the opportunity to learn from them and from the professors in partnership um, in different ways um, with Central and other universities around growing our expertise together. So it really is that partnership, which is a two-way um, street. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sally. I know, we're uh, rare to be another Sally and another Sally D, so that's, um, <laughs> uh, we're really excited to be here tonight to share a little bit about the partnership. Um, Julie's passing out one of our Masters of Arts in Teaching uh, brochures, okay. and you will get to hear from the candidates. All of them are actually, they just participated in graduation this past weekend at CCSU. They have one more research class that they have to come back for this summer, but they're looking for jobs, um, and so many of them are, are um, hot on the pursuit for, for positions. Um, so two of the uh, programs that we have at CCSU that are placed in Wethersfield Public Schools this particular school year are our elementary program and our MAT or our Masters of Arts in Teaching program. Um, our elementary program are undergraduate students and they're in the teaching program from their junior to senior year. Some of them tip over a little bit into a fifth year. Um, depending on their coursework. So the um, course that's been placed in Emerson, Williams, and Highcrest is the second sequence course, and it's really um, kind of an overview of methods, elementary education methods. Um, they do about 45 hours in the classroom setting, and they work closely with their cooperating teacher to kind of learn all the ins and outs and begin lesson planning and just kind of the, the baby steps of becoming a teacher. Um, so we're really happy to have that program in place, and um, I do not currently teach in that program, but I've heard it's been a really incredible experience for our teacher candidates as well as the faculty, um, and that's been going on for about two years. Um, the program that I have representatives from today and the um, program that I do currently teach in is our Masters of Arts in Teaching program. It's a 13-month intensive 49-credit master's and certification program in 13 mm -hmm. months. So look at them, they're actually standing up <laughs> and smiling, which is amazing after uh, taking 46 credits in 12 months. So, um, so we're uh, very happy to have them here. They represent, um, and I'll have them introduce themselves, but they represent math, special education, um, Spanish, and English secondary. The special education is actually K-12, but our program focuses primarily on secondary education and co-prepares special education teachers with secondary teachers, so they really learn the co-teaching experience um, and really focused on the needs of all students and meeting the needs of diverse students in the classroom, so they have those experiences on campus. And then what's really important about the partnership is they get to actualize that in real schools. So it doesn't really matter what we say, they don't believe what we say on campus, but when they see it in action in the schools and they're able to talk with their cooperating teachers and make sense of what they're learning, it's incredibly powerful. So it really, um, the research tells us that 
um, candidates that are prepared in partnership settings, really embedded partnerships between the university and the district, are more prepared for their first year of teaching and to meet the needs of all of the children in their classroom, their first year teaching where, you know, other candidates, it takes them a few years to kind of get their feet under them. So we're really um, pleased to be able to send out into the workforce exceptionally qualified teachers, and that's really um, a, a direct testament to the relationship that we have with Weathersfield Public Schools. So we appreciate your partnership and your support. Um, and I will turn it over to the candidates to just tell you a little bit about their experience here. They, um, they will be brief and just kind of share what they've gotten out of the experience. Hi, my name is Julie. Um, as Sally said, I am in the English cohort. Um, this partnership has been exceptionally great. Um, so I think one of the greatest things about it is the fact that we are there for the majority of the school year. We spend um, the fall semester doing our internship where we are there in the mornings at Weathersfield High School um, in the same classrooms that we will be student teaching in. So to have that opportunity to really get to know the school, the staff, the cooperating teacher, as well as the students, um, just made the student teaching experience all that much more better and really gave me as um, you know, a pre-service teacher and an incoming new teacher um, the opportunity to really experience an entire school year. Good evening, uh, my name is Beverly. I am part of the Spanish cohort of the MAT program, and I was fortunate enough to not only work with one, but two uh, Spanish teachers at uh, Weathersfield High School. And not only was it um, eye-opening to see the different methods you can really learn and approaches from two different teachers, but ultimately I think the goal was the same, was to provide the best cultural experience for students and kind of um, really push them to take a risk and uh, immerse themselves <coughs> in the language. But aside from that, the opportunity to work with um, some other of my um, uh, peers in that setting, uh, observe them in either the um, English or I think I observed uh, math and special ed classes was really helpful in later creating lessons that I think uh, met the needs of all my students in my Spanish classroom. So thank you for uh, providing us with that opportunity. Great. Good evening, my name is Casey. I'm part of the special ed cohort through the MAT program. Um, one of the things that they always told us in classes and I kind of was skeptical about it was this is your chance to make mistakes and this is your chance to figure out what works. And I found that to be incredibly true. Um, when I first met my host teacher, she said, whatever works for you, we'll figure it out. Um, and while I was there, I really learned a lot from being surrounded by um, a highly capable and incredible staff. And I learned a lot from them within the ADP program at Weathersfield High School. And I found that being able to have that supportive community has prepared me to be a teacher for my first year. Great. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Tim. I'm with the mathematics cohort. Uh, just kind of piggybacking up what was said earlier, I think the best thing was having that full first semester to just kind of get used to the school and the environment and the kids and the teachers and just really felt like I was part of it. Because uh, I remember when I was working previously at a different school and told one of the teachers there that I wanted to become a teacher, uh, he told me of his student teaching experience where he walked in on day one, was given the grade book and said good luck and the host teacher walked out. And my experience was pretty much the exact opposite of that. I had a phenomenal time. Uh, I was actually even able to observe some other mathematics classes with other teachers to get some different ideas of what to do uh, and even have some time to try out my own things at the beginning before I really started the student teaching in the second semester. And it just felt like a seamless flow through into the actual takeover. And it almost felt like I had been there the entire year and there was very, very little stress right at the beginning. I think it was phenomenal. So. Great, this is Excellent. great. Some other environments, um, there's been some shared professional development by Weathersfield Public School and central faculty. Um, there's also been some opportunities for grants and other uh, kind of um, research opportunities. Um, in addition, uh, Neela, Takora, and myself serve on some different advisory committees. They have an oversight CTAC committee that um, allows us to have a voice and partnership in some of the work they do for their um, teacher prep program. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight and sharing their experiences. You know, I have a question for one of the Sallies. <laughs> uh, 
Um, can you, or it's not really a question, can you explain again the timeline of this program? Because that's what's really thrilling my ears. Because it used to be six to eight weeks, and that was it. Um, you've you've yeah, really so got your feet wet. Yeah. Well, so what's, what's nice about our undergraduate program is they have four semesters of clinical experience. Um, and the one that they uh, that I was sharing was the second semester, and then the fourth semester is the student teaching. So that's your more traditional undergraduate mm -hmm. program. Our Masters of Arts in Teaching program, they all came in with bachelor's degrees. That's um, the 13 month, 49 credits, and they have a summer school experience where they're um, all of July, they're in summer school um, working with students, and then in Wethersfield Public Schools, they were starting fall semester, so starting in September, um, maybe late August, with their cooperating teachers four mornings a week, and then they moved into full-time student teaching in the spring. So they really did have a full year residency That's um, in, in Wethersfield Public Schools, and, and I think they yeah. all shared kind of how important that was to their experience. Isn't that a great experience to have a whole year? That's wonderful, thank you. And we are, thank you so much, and we're so excited to continue to grow the partnership. We are working very closely with Sally and very pleased to be able to do so. I'm glad so to hear you. it, too. Thank you. Any other questions? John? No, I just want to wish you all well. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy task. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see you around. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, oh, 14. Okay, so we're going to move on to meetings held. Um, we had quite a few special Board of Ed meetings. This one was on May 9th, um, 2018. Elaine? Um, this meeting was on a personnel matter regarding a non-renewal, and it was held in open session, so anyone wishing to attend it could have attended. It was not a private executive session. The decision is remain, remains to be seen. Okay. Thank you. Another special Board of Ed meeting on May 11, 2018, and that was a confidential student matter. Then we had our WEC meeting on May 14, 2018. Polly, can you speak to that? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, yes. The, um, the minutes for that meeting are included in your packet. Um, the, uh, I think one of the main highlights was um, the, there were nine people who graduated from the uh, PEP pr uh, program on May 10th, and um, they, uh, uh, which was very exciting because this is, I think, the second or third year of this second. program. Yeah. And um, the, uh, uh, there is a grant from uh, the Hartford Foundation of Public Giving, which is, un unfortunately, it's in its third and final year, so they are working um, to uh, renew that grant. And um, the summer transition for, uh, to kindergarten program will take place uh, in July, and the uh, family learning program is winding down for the year. Um, they're looking at some future program, uh, programming, uh, perhaps a, a uh, hosting a family fun night at the Wethersfield Housing Authority, um, so they're gonna continue to work on some ideas there. Um, that's great. That's Thank it. you, Polly. Any questions for Polly? Then she's going to move on to CREC meeting on May 16th, 2018. Uh, yes, the um, give me one minute here. Um, I'm sorry, the uh, the CREC had their annual meeting uh, last week. They had a number of um, <clears throat> of items they addressed. Um, uh, uh, spent quite a bit of time on their own budget, uh, which is quite extensive, and um, and then also uh, referred to some of the um, the legislative um, items in uh, that came up this year for them, um, and they uh, uh, that uh, that um, applied to um, transportation and uh, funding for them. As I mentioned before, that's become a a, um, a, a very big concern for them um, as far as even the whole magnet school uh, opportunity. And, um, and then they also reviewed some, um, 
They approved some new policies and um, had some more to be considering. So they're okay. moving forward. Thank you. Any questions for Polly on Crick? Okay, we had, again, a special Board of Ed meeting on May 17, 2018. Ginger? Oh, and Ginger, before I go on, there was also one on May 22, 2018, so you can speak to both of those. Okay, so actually on the 17th, there were two separate meetings, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. They were both regarding confidential student matters. The one um, held today, this morning, on the 22nd was also um, on a confidential student matter. Okay, thank you. And Kevin, our finance and information meeting, which we left before the meeting tonight. Yes, thank you. We uh, at first discussed uh, the budget uh, reductions that we approved this evening, so we don't have to go over that again. Uh, but also, we closed out the 1718 uh, year, uh, which was, you know, again, kudos to our business office. In a $57 million budget, we were within $5,000 um, of, uh, of our final budget, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, and beyond that, in terms of other business, um, we had our annual audit. Uh, members of the board and members of the um, town council met with Bloom Shapiro uh, about a week or so ago, and uh, um, and we came out. The board came out with a clean bill of health for the uh, for the second year in a row, for as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, the board and the business office continues to adopt all the best practices, and they received many accolades from uh, the uh, auditors at Bloom Shapiro. Any questions for Kevin? That was a great audit report. Okay. <laughs> okay, meeting scheduled. We have Policy and Planning Committee on May 31st, 2018 at 6 o'clock, and WEC, Weathersfield's Early Childhood Collaborative, on June 11th, 2018 at 4.30. And John, you want to speak to the parade, which is coming up this Absolutely. Saturday? Absolutely. It's coming. It's going to be here. This it's is going to be coming. sunny. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and um, be there at 8.30. We are ready to go. If it does rain, we're at the high school. So and it's going to be in the auditorium at the high school, my understanding. Um, same time if it rains? Yep, same time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. How are you going to get all the floats in the high school? You're going to bring them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any unfinished business? I have a report for Justin if you would like. He oh. had to leave. Oh. Can you, I'll, when we do, you want to do it now? Oh, unfinished no, business? I, I'm, I'll, I'll wait. wait. You can be Justin at the end. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> All right. If there's um, and any other unfinished business? Yeah, Michael? Yeah, I just want to clarify with regard to the special board meeting on the 9th of May. Um, that was, it started in open session and the employee requested that it be held in executive session. Oh, so you, we Michael. did go into executive session at that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. John? Oh, what if question, um, if the tornado came through Weathersfield and we didn't have school, what would happen to our graduation date? The graduation date, because of the fact that we set the graduation date we would have been fine with that graduation date um, it's interesting because what uh, some of the districts have done is they've actually applied for a waiver to the state because they've had so many snow days they just physically can't fit 180 days in um, I know in Wallingford they were able to stay where they were because they had built in extra days it's one of the things that we've done as well uh, Wallingford had I think 183 student days we had 182 so we had a little bit of leeway. But um, I understand Brookfield, I think the superintendent oh. Brookfield actually applied for a waiver. And there are other Oxford districts. Is also Oxford has, has been out, uh, Newtown has been out quite a bit. So, um, still out. Yeah, it, I mean, again, unprecedented. We actually were quite lucky with the, the level of damage that happened out uh, in the West. So Coast. do you think so. the state will approve their waiver or are they gonna hold it hard? That remains to be seen. It's exceptionally rare that a districts apply for waivers and B the state actually grants them I remember the one year we went and I mentioned during Fred's little blurb about you know hurricanes and blizzards and whatnot I believe there was one year where we went out to I want to say like the 20, 28th, 28th yes. of, of June yes, so did. and if you look at our calendar with the number of emergency days that we have we do have an additional week of emergency days we go right out to the end of June so 
Yeah, we were fortunate, John, but a very good question. Anyone else? All right, so move on from unfinished business. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that you have a five minute limit. Okay. All right, are there any board comments? I just have a quick one. Chris? I want to thank John Cassio for bailing me out of my incoherent expl explanation of uh, my duties on uh, action item 6A. He was correct and I was wandering. That's right. So I want to let you know that. Okay. That John's on, on John is on point here. <laughs> I was not, but and thank you, were, you. And you were wandering. I was but wandering. So now you're found. But I'm back now. <laughs> Got me thinking of that tornado because it came right down this street here and through my neighborhood, the one in uh, 98, and then I got married the next day. So the rest is history. <laughs> Are you saying something? <laughs> Somebody telling you something? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other final comments? Well, I have some prepared ones here because this has been such a busy and exciting time of the year in our school system and any school system minus tornadoes. We're still very busy. The board does make every attempt to go to as many events and activities as possible to celebrate with students, teachers, parents, and the community the success of our young citizens. Last Wednesday, I had the opportunity to attend the WSPC Volunteer Recognition Awards. These awards are given to those who have shared their time and energy to make our schools better. We believe that a school system is successful because it has a great foundation, and our early childhood focus is a critical component of that foundation. But there is more to creating and sustaining the bedrock of our Wethersfield Public Schools. Our system is strengthened by the work and dedication of volunteers, those parents and citizens who see a need and put their efforts into it. So the board wants to say a heartfelt thank you to all those people who volunteer in our schools. You make Wethersfield Public Schools a better place to learn and succeed. And also tonight, we have honored many individuals who have played a central role in our success over many years. I had the privilege of working with many of them, and it truly was just that, a privilege. And finally, it's impossible for me to forget the 40 years I enjoyed in the classroom, which leads me to comment on the teachers we honor tonight. I just can't help myself, because I honestly believe that teaching is not a profession, it's a passion. The teachers we celebrated here tonight have a passion for working with our young scholars to prepare them for their bright futures, whatever they may be. We want those we honor tonight, and indeed all teachers, all Wethersfield teachers in particular, to know that we appreciate and acknowledge your passion and dedication and all you do for our children. I'd just like to share a quote with you that I actually said last year too, but I stumbled upon it many years ago, and I've saved it for this occasion. And the quote is, teaching is the choicest of professions because everybody who is anybody was taught how to be somebody by a teacher. Thank you. And we have words from Justin, but he's disguised as John Cassio. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin had to leave again, but uh, he handed me what's going on life at the high school. Tomorrow is the senior picnic, as well as the academic awards. Uh, there's an instrumental concert at 6.30 at the high school on Thursday. They have a half a day of school on uh, the 25th, no school on the 28th, and the senior prom on June 2nd. Oh, so good. I reality is nice. setting in for the high school seniors. I know. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? So may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstaining? Are you staying? Thank you all and good night. <laughs>